Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our joint main event of the evening. Please welcome, first to the ring, uh, from London, uh, Ian Dapper Napper. Well, is his future really so bright that he has to wear shades, but it's a big fight for him tonight, when he has to win, really. Well, I think it's a deciding fight. It's really where his future's going to go. He's going to stay at a um, small level, domestic level. You know, if he can go on, you know, it's very, very important. How much has he learned from his loss against Jason Gould? Can he move forward? Can he go on to the, the bigger stage? All those questions that we asked tonight. You know, he's obviously searched his soul a little bit after his loss. Still very confident. Can he find something better? He's fast, he's flashy, he's good to watch. But there is the question of whether flyweight is really his division, whether he's really a light flyweight. Is he strong enough? Does he hit hard enough to have an impact with the man most people regard as the top flyweight in the country at the moment, Peter Coldshaw? He's up against the former amateur star, but he does have bags of ability. crowd in here, lots of support for both these fighters, but that man looks confident. No change there, then. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now please welcome to the ring uh, the current WBU uh, flyweight champion of the world, Peter Coleshaw! And he's coming into the Liverpool football club anthem you'll never walk alone big liverpool fan in fact his manager mark quinn has got a box at anfield and you'll have heard in adam smith's preview report that there's a bit of a sort of cup final revisited angle here because napper used to have trials with arsenal football club Cecil Ross, 
The timekeeper at the bell is Mr. Michael McCann from Harrow, and the judges at ringside scoring the contest, Mr. Glenn Feldman from the USA, Mr. Carl Rogers from Essex, England, and Mr. Rich Thompson from Surrey in England, and the referee in charge of the action and in charge tonight of his 28th world title contest from Durban in South Africa, Mr. Darrell Ribini. My lords, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, live and exclusive on Sky Sports from York Hall in London, it's Big Fight Time. Sponsored by Red Square, the champion drink, the Pax a Punch, Frank, Frank Warren uh, proudly presents World Championship Boxing and a contest of 12 three minute rounds to decide the WBU Flyweight Championship of the World. Between and introducing the boxers, and firstly, fighting out of the blue corner, he wears the silver trunks and comes from Hackney here in London. As a professional, he's had 10 contests, 9 wins and 1 loss. He weighed in at 7 stone, 13 and 3 quarters, and comes to the ring tonight as a former ABA champion and the current Southern Area Flyweight Champion, presenting Hackney's own Ian Dapper Napper. And across the ring, ladies and gentlemen, in the red corner, wearing the black trunks, trimmed with white, coming from the Liverpool here in England. As a professional, he has a 21 fight record, 19 wins, 10 wins coming by way of knockout, with one loss and one draw. He tipped the scales at seven stones, 12 pounds and three quarters, and is the former Commonwealth champion and the current WBU flyweight champion of the world, presenting now all known, Peter the Quarboy Conshaw. The referee, Mr. Darrell Rubin, will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Listen to me both times. Don't keep your punches up, okay? I want you to shake, listen to me, shake hands, may the best man win. Shake hands. Right. Twelve three-minute rounds for the WBU Flyweight Championship of the World. Interesting to see how this fight pans out tactically. Napa says that he will bamboozle and confuse Colshaw. But Colshaw has a very solid record, only ever beaten by A.D. Lewis back in 1997 in the British and Commonwealth Championship fight. Colshaw's the one in the black trunks, the silver of the former amateur star Ian Napa was much sought after his signature when he turned professional. But beaten by Jason Booth and his biggest fight to date for a British and Commonwealth crowd. He just wasn't strong enough that night, never really seriously threatened to win either. Giving away a lot in height and reach. How does he get in close? How does he put on pressure? Is he strong enough when he gets there? Speed would be the answer for Napa. It would be, yes. Lots of angles in and out, being very busy with the hands. As he said, trying to bamboozle Culture, but that's a, that's a tough job. Also very tall, very long, and a lot more experienced than Napa. Napa trying to get in range, got there with a the right hand there. Didn't really quite land flush. Remember, he's never stopped anybody yet, Ian Napa, as a professional. Which again suggests that at this weight, he just doesn't really have a dig. So he's going to have to outwork and outbox Colshaw all the way if he wants this WBU crown. Thirteen months ago, Colshaw, great win over baby Jake Matlala. It wasn't a great fight, but it's a great name to have on his record, even though Matlala was some way past his excellent best. But a victory like that is wonders for fighting. It gives an awful lot of confidence. Good right hand there from Napa. 
Stalin to get a bit closer. Coleshaw trying to keep him on the end of the left jab. Or to come again, the right hand from Napper using his skills to find angles for the punches. Well, that's a shot that Coleshaw has always been open to that right hand. Napper finding the target time and time again against the taller opponent who just keep that left hand low. Promising this for Napper in the first round. He found he, he had a bit more dynamite in those fists as well because they've been pretty hefty looking right hands. But what he's shown already is that he can get close enough to Kulshaw to catch him and that's very important. Napper knows he can't afford to fail again at this level. Needs this to be graduation now. Good little right hand to the body from Kulshaw. He's one of those fighters Kulshaw seems to improve as fights go on. He's not started well. Another good right hand from Napper, who's busy, busy, busy in this first round. Good start from Napper, just rolling forward, covering up well. Got a bit of momentum. That's Napper's first round. Better punches from him. Welcome back to the York Hall in Bethnal Green and in election week. A not very marginal decision for Ian Napper in the first round. Great with the right hands, wasn't he? It was great. He just kept rolling forwards, had nice rhythm, started good, and he's found the target already with that right hand. There it is, just rolling forward, bringing the right hand over the top round to the shoulder, and that was a good start for Napper. Second round in this atmospheric arena where nobody's more than about 20 yards from the ring. Coleshaw, the defending WBU champion in the black trunks from Liverpool. Again, the right hand from the hackney hero, Ian Napper. Came into the ring tonight wearing sunshades. Likes loud clothes and pretty loud boxing trunks as well. Flashy, charismatic sort of individual. Could be a star if he can do it in the ring. Well, the big problem for Napper is his lack of power. Not caused a stoppage so far in his career, and that's always a problem, especially in a long fight. You know, Kulshaw might just pace himself better, might be the stronger down the stretch. And you Napa's had a good win since that loss to Jason Booth, beating Oleg Kiryukin. That was a tough opponent, and he won it well, didn't he, that night? Looked good. Yes, he did. He came back well from a loss, and it's the frame of mind. You know, he's trying to get himself in, he's got to be very positive. Using good skills on the way in, Napa covering up quite well, quite cleverly. Making it hard for Coleshaw to catch him, and getting in range to throw right hands like that one. Well, Coleshaw's got to start using that jab to good effect, he's got to start steadying Napa up, get him on the end of that punch, keep him at range. Despite plenty of wins, Napa's not managed to really convince as a pro so far. Is this his night? Started well, but there's a long, long way ahead and many chapters to be written, maybe, in this story. Again, close short, just caught by that right hand. He's struggling with Napa's speed and dazzling range of punches. He caught Napa there on the way in with a good right hand. That just steadied Napa up. Koshaw definitely with the edge in the power department. He's got ten knockouts on his record. It's about half of his career victories. Now it's starting to be better for Kulshaw. He's just starting to keep, you know, stand his ground, get the centre of the ring, keep Napa a little bit on the back foot. And caught him again with the right hand. Napa looking as if he's feeling the weight of these a bit too. Changing the pattern in round two. Again, Napa with the right hand. This has been stung a bit in there, Napa, with that right hand of Kulshaw's. Coleshaw coming back well to maybe nip that second round. We have more live interactive cricket coming up for you, continuing our exclusively live coverage of the NatWest series, Sunday morning, 10.30, Sky Sports 1, 
couldn't really be bigger. England against Australia, live cricket, Sky Sports 1, and of course, interactive for Sky Digital viewers on Sky Sports Extra. This is warming up nicely too. Yes, yeah, not a bad contest here at the York Hall, Bethnal Green. Defending WBU, flyweight title holder Peter Colshaw of Liverpool. Six defence in the black trunks, Ian Napa in the silver. It's only won a Southern Area Championship so far as a pro. ABA champion in his amateur days, as well as a quarter-finalist at the World Championships. Great right hand again from Napa there. This is going to keep having to use that punch. Once Kutschow starts keeping his ground, letting his own right hand go, that could be big problems for Nava. Nava has to keep busy, keep rolling forward, keep the momentum in his favour. He has to slip that Kutschow jab too, doesn't he? Yes, that's a, a good punch for Kutschow. He's got to keep Nava on the end of that. started well, it could boil up into a very good fight indeed, let's see how things develop. Just this problem for Napa of being in with a naturally bigger man. Big left hook there for Kulshaw, that rocked the head of Napa. And again he walked onto a right hand to cover up Napa. He's got a pretty good chin usually, but there's no doubt about it, we've seen it already. The effect of Colshaw's punches is much greater than the effect of Napa's. And again, he looked a bit rocky there when that went in. Napa, and he's on his bike. You see these punches almost traveling down into Napa's legs, can't you, some of them? Yes, you can. They're really having an effect on Napa. Nava. Nava's trying to fight back, trying to keep loose, not be bothered by these punches, but they're definitely having an effect. Koshaw feels he's something of a forgotten man among the flyweights. He wants glamour nights and glamour fights in front of the cameras, wants people to be writing about him. That's what he and his manager, Mark Quinn, feel anyway. They want to fight the top men in the world, men like Eric Morel, maybe Irene Pacheco, the IBF champion. Steady work here from Colshaw. Looks controlled and experienced. Napa's buzzing around him like a quarrelsome little wasp almost, but Colshaw at the moment, just looks as if he has things under control, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He looks stronger. He's got him on the end of his punches, and that's another good round for Colshaw. Let's uh, have a look at that world flyweight scene, usually dominated by Central Americans and men from Southeast Asia. Tough little men. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the guy at the top there, the WBC champion. You can do that. Eric Morel, reckoned by many to be the top flyweight around at the moment. The big punching Mexican, Fernando Montiel, could be a possible target uh, for Cole Shaw or indeed Napa if he can come through here. And Damien Kelly's interesting there, the Irishman who holds the IBO title. Cole Shaw's people are trying to uh, get a fight together with him at the moment to no avail. There's talk of £50,000 side bets and all that kind of thing, but at the moment it's just that talk. Well, the fighter out there for Kulshaw, what he needs here is a very good performance, but he's got over that first round, now he's starting to warm up, put his punches together, and you can just see there that right hand having a definite effect on Mapa. So here comes round four, due to go 12. One of those more lightly regarded world championships of which there are so many around, of course, these days. Koshal's win over Matt Lala was away in South Africa, by the way. He's also beaten people like Neil Swain in a very good third-round stoppage of Daniel Ward away back. A shock win for him, another South African, which won him a Commonwealth Championship. A little swollen around the left eye, perhaps, Napa. 
Yes, I think there's a, a little bit of a mark there. Nava, who's got to keep that head moving, got to roll in, got to let that right hand go over the top. Got to be very busy, Nava. It's a tough job, this, for Ian Nava. And he'll get Sarah again with the right hand. Napa handled by Bob Kipps, Steve Kipps and uh, Johnny Kingsley. All in the corner tonight, the usual team. It was a dazzling start by Napa, but he's slowed a little, and I just wonder if his self-belief's been dented a little too. But just as I say that, he snarls out a bit more defiance with that right hand. Well, he needed to find a punch like that. That really rocked the head back of Culshaw. That'll have made Culshaw think of it. Now, Nava needs to keep pressing on after that. Culshaw has been on the floor a couple of times as well. Scored by Neil Swain and in a draw with Maxim Pugachev. That's good combination punching that from Napa. He does have ability. I think his problems really are with size and strength at this weight. That's a good finish to the round for Napa, who's been spurred on by that good right hand. He's come back pretty well here. He's been out working Coleshaw for a little while. crowd absorbed in the argument here always a knowledgeable crowd here in the cradle of East End boxing Kosho's just let his work rate drop a little in this session as he has busy for the first two minutes the end of the round Kanaba. Welcome back, there's Ian Napper, born in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe, still sends some of his purse money back to his folks back there, very much London-based these days, and gave up a chance of going to university to pursue his boxing career. Well, it was a good finish to the round, I'm not sure he quite did enough to win it, but certainly got some confidence back with some good right hands, Napper. Here's round five. Cole Shaw in those black trunks of his. Glenn scorecard so far. Yeah, the last three rounds for Culshaw, just that bit busier, that much more in control, but now we can maybe get a bit of confidence from the last minute of the fourth round. Ian Dapper, Napper, as he calls himself, a dedicated follower of fashion by all accounts. himself a difficult target for Coleshaw. The one advantage he has is in speed and maybe skills too, although Coleshaw would argue that point, I'm sure. Three judges scoring this, two from England, one from the USA. Good shot, the right hand from Napa. It looks like he's thought about this a little. He's just trying to make himself a shade more elusive. He's slipping quite a few of Coleshaw's punches here. It's important that Coleshaw keeps his concentration right because you know, he can be caught with that right hand. He is pretty upright. A big gap over the left hand to get that right hand on for Napa. So the concentration is a key for Coleshaw. The wrong tactics you feel for Napa would be to stand there and trade. He doesn't want to get into a fierce, close argument. No, he's got to be cute, he's got to be in and out, combinations, and keep bringing that right hand into play. Got to do what his hero, Sugar Ray Leonard, was so adept at, confuse and bamboozle. But now, I'm moving the head better in this round, making Culture miss a lot more. Wild with the hooks, Napa. Trying to give it the lateral movement as well. 
fascinating tactically this a little bit of the chess match element developing and like the best fights signs that this might ebb and flow a little in fortunes let's see well, he's doing better in this round now but just rolling well getting his shots off just confusing Kilshaw a little bit who's unable to get that jab working sweet boxing has to be the answer for Napa right Napa for me There's some familiar figures here tonight. One of them is Mickey Quinn, the former Newcastle United and many other clubs goal scorer, racehorse trainer now, and brother of Mark Quinn, the manager of Peter Colshaw. So no prizes for guessing who he's supporting here tonight. Good to see him again. Jovial character. Not sure he'd make flyweight just at the moment, though. <laughs> he never would have done, would he, though? Uh, good guy from Spencer Town in Newcastle and a big boxing fan. Back to the action, round six. Napa with a little spring in his step again. It's only his 11th professional fight tonight, this. Ian Napa, the chances have come quite early, but they tend to at this weight. These guys who weigh less than most of the jockeys in the derby today. It's important that Navo as he comes in, he's trying to roll cross arm guard there. He's got to keep doing that. He's got he can't let Kulshaw start getting the jab working because then Kulshaw will make the room for the rest of his punches. Kulshaw going through a period where he's just working again. The punch just seems to bounce off Kulshaw. The thing is, some flyweights that have landed a punch like that, like Charlie Magri, the man would have been flattened. That's right, but he, you know, the good thing for Nava is he is finding the target. This is better from him. Can he keep his composure and use his speed and accuracy? This is good stuff from Napa again. Yes, this is very good. A little good spell in the fight for Nava. Starting to get more and more confident. And Kulcho just losing his rhythm a bit. But overconfidence could be a problem for Napa in the fight, possibly. Because that could lead him to start trading again. Yes, I think that the main thing, Napa keeps moving that head. Can't afford to get hit off the heavy-handed Kulcho. Jolting the head back of Cole Shaw. He's being outworked in this round and finding it hard to get his shots on. Cole Shaw, that chin carried pretty high. Tall guy making a bit of a target there for Napa. I'm enjoying this one, aren't you, Glenn? It's a very good fight. Just going one way, then the other. But certainly at this point, Napa's the one having the success. But you just wonder whether Colshaw can find a punch to turn things around a bit. He landed it with a rather jolting looking right on that slightly swollen left eye of Napa. Napa can put the punches together in clusters, the old punches in bunches. Yes, that's a bit more the key for Napa, just letting more shots go, more effective in Napa's round. Beyond dispute. Adam Smith has somebody for us to meet. Yes, it really is a fascinating strategic battle, isn't it, Mickey? And Ian Napper is starting to get the better of things. He is. I've still got I've got him two rounds behind. He obviously went off electric electric pace. Um, I thought Kulshaw won the next three after that. But he's, he's turning to be an exciting fight. He's catching Kulshaw over there with a them over and rights all the time. But it's interesting because like then Kulshaw comes back in, but it's a great, great fight. That's the key punch, the right hand over the top. He's getting the distance. Can he keep the pace up, Ian Napper? That's what we've obviously talked earlier on. I think that's the only problem. I think maybe the pace might be going too fast for him, but who knows? We'll wait and see. Will Kulshaw's power prove effective 
as the fight goes into the latter stages. I think so. I think that's what will happen. I think he'll win it on points, but obviously strength being the factor. It's anyone's fight here. Thanks, Adam. That was Mickey Catwell he was uh, talking to, by the way. I neglected to introduce Mickey, one of our top flyweights of uh, recent times. Seventh round here. Peter Coleshaw, Black Trunks, the scouser, defending this WBU crown that he's had since 1998. Some people have questioned Coleshaw's attitude in the past. Thought he was a bit of a wild boy. Likes a night out. Well, who doesn't? <laughs> He's a wild boy or choir boy. Well, he needs to find something a bit more effective, Coleshaw. He's just he's going to sleep a little bit. Concentration seems to be wavering. Not about growing in confidence, getting his shots off, busier in there. Great desire about being Napa tonight. So quite really that he just has to win to prove to people he does belong at this level and uh, has been worth plenty of the hype that's been heaped in his direction. Not so much lately, but certainly when he turned pro. It's a Frank Warren fighter. Both of these were ABA champions at right flyweight. A good right hand again from Napa. His hand speed's good. It's a good phase of the fight, this, for the challenger. Yes, it is. This push shows weak a little bit, a little bit of confidence. He's gone out of his work, getting hit time and time again with that right hand. And I think you know, he's having to think in there. He's finding Napa difficult to hit. And you know, that's made him run out of confidence. But he does finish strongly, usually, Coleshaw. Seen it before. Mixing it up quite cleverly. A little man from Hackney. Five feet, one inch tall in Napa. He's a lot smaller than those Derby jockeys, isn't he? Reminds me, I lost plenty of money on that this afternoon, as you did, Glenn, back in sunny Glen. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, you've got to try something, haven't you? <laughs> that was a good stage in the fight for Nava, rolling in well. Kulshaw can't find the punches to land, and, you know, he, you can just tell he's thinking in there, not finding the answers. Breathing a little heavily there for a moment. Napo, almost as if he was just having a little pink to himself. Coleshaw, good jab. His best one for a while. But he's going to need a bit more than that if he's going to win these rounds. Napa the busier. Welcome back to Bethnal Green. Fascinating fight going on here for the WBU flyweight title. And Ian Napper on the left there. So far, the computer says he's landed eight more punches. So they've got it quite close. But Napper maybe has won the last three rounds. Well, oh my God, I've given the last three rounds. But only make Napper one point ahead. It's still pretty close. Glenn and I disagreed about the fourth. He gave to Coleshaw. I gave to Napa. So I've got Napper three ahead at this point. Gives me just 1.6766 in Napa's favour. Got him with a good right hand there, Coleshaw. Napa in a spot of bother over on the far side. Just stiffened up a bit when that punch landed. But he's pretty well conditioned usually, Napa. I wonder how long it will take his head to clear from that. But now Coleshaw is just hunting him down a little. This looks a bit different here. And he looks at, suddenly looks slow, Napa. Oh, he's hurt by that right. Oh, he fell against the ropes and that'll have to go down as a count. And suddenly everything seems to have drained out of Napa. All of a sudden. Yes, he just come out, looked tired, and then straight away the punches had a much bigger effect. I think the referee made the decision that the ropes had kept him up there. Now Coleshaw, can he finish it now? Has the fuel tank suddenly flickered towards empty for Napa. It looks like that. Is he just going through a rough back? He's staggered again by a right hand. 
Coleshaw might take him out here. There's a long time left in the round as well. Suddenly a dramatic turnaround here. Well, it's amazing how this fight has changed very quickly. Never hurt again. He's badly hurt. He's badly hurt and his head is taking time to clear. And he falls to the floor and I'd be surprised if he manages to get up because he seemed very disorientated. Eighth round. It's all over here, I think, for Ian Napa. He can't go on. And Peter Koshaw retains the title in a dramatic eighth round when Ian Napa simply fell apart. Well, who'd have thought that at the end of the previous round? Well, it, it just the fight just changed in a matter of seconds. Napa just came out. Look, Ty, look, he's still he's trying to stand up there. He can't. The legs are given way. We told to sit down again. He just come out and had nothing left. Kuljo hit him with a couple of shots. The whole fight changed and just a matter of punches before Kuljo retained his title. Credit to Peter Kuljo. He keeps coming up with the wins. That's a nightmare defeat for Ian Napa. And I think they really now have seriously got to say no more action at flyweight. This is a light flyweight. I think the fact was he's just in with a man who's too big and strong for him at the weight as he was with Jason Booth. He has the ability, he could be a heck of a light flyweight now. Huh? Yes, he could be, but you know, well done to Peter Kulshaw. He was going through a, a little bad patch, wasn't getting the shots off, was starting to look weak as Napa just looked to be growing and growing in confidence. And then when he saw Napa just start to look weak, he took the, the right time, pressed home, and then really let the punches go. And when he did that, he looked strong, and the right hands really had an effect on Napa. You could see, really, from quite a way out that Napa was never going to get through that round. He was on very, very stiff legs from early in the round. And he's stumbling about there like a Saturday night drunk. Yes, these punches were a really big effect on Napa, the extra strength we saw a bit in the early round just keeps the punches going here comes the finish Glenn a, a solid right hand on the side of the head but he really was, you know, he was out of it the legs had gone and every punch was having an effect on Napa it was quite a surprise when it came and that he went so quickly Napa suddenly put his foot on the accelerator and there was Absolutely nothing there anymore. So right on the top of the head, it might have been any punch. He was so tired and out of it by then, he slumps forward. And really, the referee didn't even need to bother to count, I don't think. No, he didn't. He was never going to be able to recover. And a very, very happy Peter Koshaw. He came through again, and good result. Peter Koshaw has been boxing since he was 10. He had a run-in with ABA officials when he came in too heavy once for an ABA championship and walked away, he never made it to an Olympic Games. But I think it's time we saluted this unsung professional. He is looking our top flyweight, though I'd love to see him now in fights with people like Damian Kelly and with Jason Booth. They'd be fascinating matchups. Yes, there's good fights out there for him. And is he going to make a, a, a fling with the, the real big names in the world? That's for Napa. What now? You do wonder. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute, 42 seconds of round now, the referee has counted out Ian Napa, Napa, the winner, and still WBU flyweight champion of the world, Peter the Quad. The choir boy, they call him, Peter Kolsch. He doesn't look much like a choir boy anymore. He used to Ladies in his uh, slightly sure younger days. He's 28 now. That's knocking on for a flyweight, believe me. Very awful contest indeed. Ian Napa! But he's at the peak of his career. Ian Napa looks absolutely distraught. The agony of defeat written across his face. That's how much it meant to him. He looked dazzling at times in there, but he often does. But he's just coming up short, I'm afraid, at this weight. That I think is now an inescapable conclusion. 
that even he will have to accept and will have to just uh, re-choreograph his career. The travelling Liverpool contingent, and there are plenty of them here, very, very happy with that victory. The training in Lanzarote paying off for Peter Koshaw at uh, Philip Calero's gym down there. His manager, Mark Quinn, has got a big villa down that way, so it all, uh, it all works nicely. And after posing for the photographers for a little bit, Peter Koshaw is going to go down and have a word with Paul Dempsey in a moment, but you know what it's like after these fights. There's always these uh, chaotic scenes in the ring. So uh, Peter Koshaw climbs out of the ring now. I'll have a little sit down and I can hand you over to Paul Dempsey. Paul. Thank you, Ian. Good job, Peter. Well done. How hard was it tonight against Ian Napa? Yeah, uh, fight. I was told to solve for eight rounds. But was you taking all my uh, shots for eight rounds? You're going. I thought, I first would caught him early on. I was going to go. But well, I thought he'd be a life, he's really a life life. And then when he hang on, he's a tough kid. He, he, he was there, you know, I could have easily boxed him easy. But I, I thought, I don't know why he gets to get him out. I'm taking some good shots. Little whisper around at ringside that your camp really thought this would go to you in the eighth round. Is that true? Yeah, it's like, yeah. And why? Oh, I, was, I was planning on... He had money on it. I'm as well as yeah. You're not supposed to do that, you know that. Explain why <laughs> you felt it would turn your way in the second half. Yeah, before they were boxing, keep him long, and then we should gradually wear him out. But when I got it over here in the first round, I wanted to get him out. And then it just turned into like, the thing, and I went back to me boxing. I was hitting him with some good shots, and he was staying there, and he's a tough kid. You are building an impressive winning run. Do you feel the wider public in this country should wake up to Peter Culshaw? Well, obviously, yes, I've done that. I've been a pro for seven years now. I've done it the hard way. I haven't been like thing going like the other back and now I'm with me managing now my and we're going all the way now. And Peter finally, there are two other outstanding domestic matches which might be made. Damien Kelly or Jason Booth. Would you be ready to take either? Of course we would, yeah. That's where the money is, we should get it on. But there's no way of saying it it's not coming out. No there's no fight coming off, can I? Enjoy this one. And very quickly. To Nicol and Jed, uh, to have a little baby, Aloise, and to my cousin, my little, my little cousin Michelle, get well soon. You did it. Well done tonight. Thanks very much indeed.